Hello everyone. Welcome to the series of lectures on the course Calculus and Numerical Methods. This is the first session of the second chapter in this course titled Sequences and their Convergence. So let's see what are sequences. Suppose I'm having a dark room in my house. Let's say I'll draw a dark room. Right. Let's say storeroom which in which there is no light. It's a dark room. And there are some objects in this room. All right. So there are some objects here. Let me uh, mark the objects. So there are some objects which are placed in this room. I don't know how many, maybe finitely many or maybe infinitely many also. I don't know. All right. So I have a dark room in which there are some objects placed. Finitely many or infinitely many, I have no idea. Now what I'll do is, I will go to this room. I will pick up one object from this room at random. Okay, I'll pick, I'll go to the room. I'll pick up one object at random in this room and I'll come out of the room with that object and I will name that object x1 and this was my first visit to the room. So in my first visit, I went inside and I got the object and I named it x1. Alright, now I go back to the room with this object and I again dump it in this room. And then I come out again. Now after some time, suppose I go once again in the room and again randomly I pick up one more object. Now I don't know whether I am picking up the same object or a different object. But I am picking up one object. So I will come out the second time from the room with one object and that object I will name it X2. Fine. Then X2 I will again take it and I will dump it in this room and I will come out again. Third time I again go to the room and at random I pick up one object and I come out with it. Again I don't know whether it is the same object which I had picked up in my first two visits. I have some, I have come out with some object. So let me call it X3. So again I go inside, dump it, come out after some time. Fourth time also I go to the room, again I pick up one object, I come out and I name that object as X4. I again go inside, I dump it and I keep on doing this. So whenever I go inside for each visit, I am coming out with the object and I am naming the object as per my visit, right? So at my 10th visit, I keep on going. At my 10th visit, I will get an object which I will call X10 and again I will keep on going. At my nth visit, sorry, at my nth visit, I go inside and come out with an object and I will call it Xn and still again I keep on doing this. I repeat the same process. Alright? So what we are actually getting here is, if you see, these are my natural numbers. This is my first visit, 1, 2, 3, 4. I am getting the natural numbers here. And corresponding to each natural number, I am getting some object. Now this object may be repeated. Because the room was dark, I couldn't see whether I was picking up the same object again or not. So it is possible that one of the objects may be x3 is equal to x10. Is same as x10. I don't know. Right? So corresponding to each natural number here, I am coming up with an object which are named as x1, x2, x3 and so on. So what I am getting actually is, I am getting a one to one correspondence between the set of natural numbers here and this room, the objects in this room. I will name this room as capital X. Right? So I am getting a one to one correspondence 
between the natural numbers and the objects or elements in this room which I am calling x now. So I can talk about a function from the set of natural numbers to this uh, objects in the room which is the set x. So I can uh, define a function which maps 1 to x1 which takes 2 to x2 which takes 3 to x3 4 to x4 which takes 10 to x10 and which takes n to xn right so what i am getting is i will call that function as f some function so this function is a one to one correspondence from the set of natural numbers to the set x right and whenever I pick up a natural number n here corresponding to this natural number n, I am getting one object xn in my set capital X. Right? The set of objects that I have obtained here is called a sequence. I will put it in red. This collection of objects that I have obtained here is called a sequence of objects from the set capital X. Alright. So, what is a sequence? A sequence is a function from the set of natural numbers to some set. Of course, this set has to be non-empty, otherwise, I can't talk about it. So, a function from the set of natural numbers to the set X, that is what I am getting. And by a sequence, what I mean is a function from the set of natural numbers to the set x which is non-empty and corresponding to each natural number here, I will be having one term of the set x. Now this term could be repeated, I don't know or could be, I'm, I may have distinct terms here also, I don't know, I have no idea. Alright, so such a collection of objects is called a sequence. Fine. So, now let us formally define the sequence. So, the formal definition goes this way. Supposing I have a non-empty set, let capital X be a non-empty set. then a sequence in this set x, the sequence in this set x is a function, is a function small f, just a notation, you can give any notation you like here, small f from n to x, all right. So, as discussed in the previous slide, on any non-empty set, I can define a function. I can define a sequence and a sequence is nothing but a function from the set of natural numbers to that set x, right? Now, we denote uh, this as, now, as I said in the previous slide, 1 will have an image, 2 will have an image, 3 will have an image. By definition, what does a, what do you mean by a function? Every point here in this set has an image and has a unique image, right? So, corresponding to 1, I will have the term, I will call it x1. Corresponding to 2, I will have the term x2 and so on. So, we denote, we denote f of n by xn for each n. That means the image of the first element that is f of 1 is x1, image of the second element that is f of 2 is x2 and so on. The image of the nth natural number here is xn. So, these x1, x2, x3 they are points in this set capital X. Alright. Now, one more thing here is this xn which I am having here, this x1 is the first term of the sequence. 
this x2 is the second term of the sequence. So let me put that in red. So this is the first term of the sequence. First term of the sequence. This x2 is the second term of the sequence. And in general, in general, xn is the nth term of the sequence. Okay. xn is called the nth term of the sequence. Fine. The notation is uh, normally. Uh, we denote this function f or the sequence f by this notation xn or you can also denote it as an infinite tuple x1, x2, xn and this keeps on going. So this is an infinite tuple or a short form for that would be this sequence xn in round brackets. All right. Some books also denote sequences as this. This is another notation, but we won't follow this. We will stick to this notation. Okay, so we won't use the last notation much. Let's stick to the first notation. Now, if the set X is the set of real numbers, in particular, If the set X is a set of real numbers, then the sequence obtained here is called a real sequence. Alright. So, uh, sequence here would be a function F from the set of natural numbers to the set of real numbers. And corresponding to each natural number N or I, I can say X, I will get the corresponding term here or I can say N only because I have used it earlier. Corresponding to each term n, I will have the term xn here, which is nothing but the image of n under the function f. Right? So, for each natural number n, I will be getting a corresponding image here. So, 1, its image will be x1, which will be a real number because this set is the set of real numbers. 2 will be having an image which is x2 which is again a real number. So, the terms of the sequence that I will be getting here will be real numbers and hence this sequence is called a real sequence whenever the set x is the set of real numbers. Alright. So, the points here when this is r would be uh, somewhat of this type corresponding to 1 I will have x1, corresponding to 2 I will have x2, corresponding to 3, I will have x3 and so on. This will keep on going because the set of natural numbers is infinite. So, what we can do is, we can plot these points in the xy plane, taking this natural numbers as the x coordinate and the set of real numbers, these points on the y coordinate. Right? So, we can form ordered pairs here. I can call this as x1, x1, this ordered pair. 2, x2, 3, x3 and all these points I can plot on the graph. So, let me plot this on the graph and show you how it looks on the graph. So, supposing I have my y axis here and x axis this side, right. So, I will just uh, redraw the y axis. So, this is my set of natural numbers and this is my real line. Okay. So, I will mark the natural numbers here. Supposing the first natural number is here, second, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and this keeps on going. So, corresponding to 1, I will have some real number here. Uh, Let us say it could be anywhere. So, let us say I will call x1 here. So, this will be the point 1, x1. Right? 
then corresponding to 2 I will have some point here on the real line I will call it x2 and this will be somewhere here and this point will be the point 2 comma x2. The point 3 could be somewhere it could be negative also so let me come down. So point 3 could be here x3 and I have the third point here. So let me put them in a circle. And this is the point 3 comma x3. Right. So x4 could be somewhere here maybe. So let me put that point x4 here. So more or less I am drawing it could be somewhere here. So that's 4 comma x4. Now corresponding to 5 the term x5 could be 0 also maybe. Because 0 is also a real number. So it could be here. So this will be the point. 5 comma x5 corresponding to 6 again maybe somewhere here it can be equal to the previous terms also so x6 uh, could be here only x2 could be equal to x6 so corresponding to 6 I can have the point here so this could be 6 comma x6 and this is how the sequence uh, real sequence looks on a graph so corresponding to 7, maybe I can put it down here somewhere. This is 7 comma x 7. That would be here. I will just extend my y axis this way. So this is how the real sequence looks in the x y plane. I hope that's clear. Now let's look at some examples of sequences. The first one we have first example for a real number c for a real number c you define the sequence xn to be equal to c for every natural number n so each term of this sequence is a real number c all right so x1 will be equal to c x2 will be equal to c, x3 will be equal to c, x4 will be equal to c and so on, xn will be equal to c and so on. This sequence is called a constant sequence because the terms of this sequence are remaining constant, only one value, right? So if I plot this on the number line, how will this look like? in the xy plane how will this look like supposing this is my set of natural numbers and this is my r let's say c is somewhere here then corresponding to 1 i will get the point here corresponding to 2 i have the same point then corresponding to 3 again i have the same point because the sequence is remaining constant right so image of every natural number will be the same so this will be 1 comma x1 that is c this will be 2 comma x2 that is c this will be 3 comma x3 that is c 4 comma x4 again that is c so all the points of the sequence will be in a straight line this way although my uh, diagram looks little crooked you can imagine that to be straight okay and all the terms of the sequence will be in a straight line this way. So this is how a constant sequence looks in the xy plane. Alright. One more example is uh, the second one. You define xn to be equal to minus 1 raised to n for each natural number n. xn you define it to be minus 1 raised to n for each n. Then what will be x1? x1 will be minus 1 raised to 1 and that's minus 1. Right? What will be x2? That will be minus 1 raised to 2. That's 1 because I'm squaring a negative number. x3 will be how much? Minus 1 raised to 3. The power is odd so this is minus 1. 
x4 will be minus 1 raised to 4 and that's plus 1. So you can see it is having alternate terms minus 1 and 1 and these are the only two terms of the sequence. Correct? So if I plot this in my xy plane, how will this look like? Let me draw this. Supposing the point 1 is here and minus 1 is here, these are the only two points I need and this is my natural numbers. So when x is equal to 1, let me put the natural numbers first. When x is equal to 1, the term of the sequence is uh, minus 1, so it will be here. When x is equal to 2, it will be plus 1. When x is equal to 3, it will be here. When x is equal to 4, it will be here. Alternatively, plus and minus 1 am, I am getting. Understanding? And this will keep on continuing. This will keep on moving in this manner. Alright? Such sequences are said to be oscillating sequences. Because they move from one point to the other infinitely many times. They keep on oscillating. Alright, such sequences are said to be oscillating sequences. Now, let us look at one more example. Let us define the sequence xn to be equal to n for each natural number n. So, how do the terms of the sequence look like? Let me write down the few terms. x1 is nothing but 1 because xn is defined to be n x2 is 2, x3 is 3. If I keep on going this way, x100 will be 100 and this keeps on going. Right? So, how does this sequence look in the xy plane? How does this sequence look in the xy plane? So, supposing I have the natural numbers here 1, 2, 3, 4, some natural numbers I will draw. And here also I need the terms are natural numbers itself. Yeah. So corresponding to 1, I have its image as 1. So this is the first term. Corresponding to 2, I have the term 2. Corresponding to 3, I will have the third term. Corresponding to 4, I will have the fourth term. And corresponding to 5, I will have the fifth term somewhere here. And this keeps on moving this way. So the terms of the sequence, they are keeping on increasing in this manner. Right? So that's how the sequence behaves. Xn equal to n. Now let's look at one more example. Fourth one. Let's say yn is equal to, I am defining the sequence yn to be equal to minus 1 raised to n plus 1 upon n for each natural number. So first, uh, let us try to compute some terms of the sequence and then uh, we will see how it looks uh, in the xy plane. So what is y1? I put n equal to 1 here, so that will be minus 1 square upon 1 and that is 1. So y1 is 1. How will y2 look? So that will be minus 1 raised to 2 plus 1. That is 3 upon 2. So that is minus half. Right? So y2 is minus half. Then I will look at the third term y3 which is minus 1 raised to 1 plus 3. That is 4 upon 3. That is 1 by 3. Same way we can compute y4 to be equal to minus 1 raised to 5 by 4 and that is minus 1 by 4. Let me compute one more. y5 will be minus 1 raised to 5 plus 1 that is 6 by 5 that is 1 by 5 and this keeps on moving. So how does it look in the xy plane? So let us do that. So I have my natural numbers here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let us see and still it keeps on moving. 
so let's say i have one here and i have minus one here okay so y1 is nothing but one so corresponding to one i have the first point here correct now what is y2 y2 is minus half so i have to mark minus half here in the same way i can mark half also here so corresponding to 2 i will get minus half so the second term of the sequence will be here y3 is 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 would be somewhere here so this term will be here correct then y4 is minus 1 by 4 so that will be still closer to 0 somewhere here approximately and y4 will be this term can you see the nice pattern the terms are coming closer and closer towards the x-axis from both the sides right then corresponding to 5 i will have the term 1 by 5 so let's say here and this will be the term next term so the next term x6 will become coming on the negative side and this keeps on moving so this is how the sequence xn sorry yn is equal to minus 1 raised to n plus 1 by n looks on the graph all right now let's look at one more example let's say i define the sequence xn to be equal to 1 upon n for every natural number n then how will this sequence behave so let me uh, plot some terms of the sequence when n is equal to 1 it is 1 when n is equal to 2 it is half 1 by 2 when n is equal to 3 it is 1 by 3 when n is equal to 4, it is 1 by 4. When n is equal to 5, it is 1 by 5. And it keeps on going this way. Right? So, if I plot this on the graph, how will this appear? All the terms are positive. Right? All the terms of the sequence are positive. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, this is my x-axis and i have my real numbers here five and supposing my one is here so corresponding to one i will get the term one here because x1 is one then x2 is half so more or less i can plot it here so x2 will be here then same way i can plot x3 more or less here and the corresponding term of the sequence will be here then x4 will be somewhere here more or less these points are not exact okay so if you want to have a look at the exact picture you can try that with the exact measurements so x4 will be 1 by 4 then i have 1 by 5 so x5 will be 1 by 5 and this keeps on moving this these points will never touch the y x axis because the term 1 by n will never become 0. Right? There is no natural number n such that 1 by n is 0. So, this points will never touch the x axis. So, I will show you all a picture in which uh, I have marked 100 points here on the x axis and how the points slowly move towards the x axis without touching the x axis. Here you see these are the points of the sequence 1 by n xn is equal to 1 by n for all natural numbers n so you can see here the interval the range here is uh, units 12 20 is taken as one unit 20 40 60 80 and 100 and you can see when x is equal to 1 that is very close to 0 here on the x axis the corresponding point is 1 here right on top then for x equal to 2, I will have the next point here that is half. So here is the point half. Right? Then corresponding to the point 3, I will have the next point x3, 0 
1 by 3 that is here. Understanding? x equal to 4. So, the points see how they are coming and as the value of x that is n that is your natural number as it is increasing the points are coming closer and closer towards the x axis. So, when x is equal to 80 it is here. When x is equal to 60 it is here. When x is equal to 20 it is somewhere here. And when x is equal to 100 it is very close not close. So, even if you take x equal to 1 lakh here, n equal to 1 lakh, still it will come closer towards the x axis, but never touch the x axis. Alright, so this is how the graph of the sequence 1 by n looks like. Next, uh, let us look at this example. Uh, let us say zn is equal to 2 raised to n for all natural numbers n. So, how do the terms of this sequence look? So, if I try to look at the first term, I have the term z1 and that is 2 raised to 1 and that is 2. The second term of the sequence is 2 raised to 2 and that is 4. The third term of the sequence is 2 raised to 3 that is 8. So, the terms of the sequence here are actually powers of 2. So, z4 is 2 raised to 4 that is 16 and this keeps on going. So, the sequence Zn here is looks this way 2, 2 square that is 4, 2 cube 8, 2 raised to 4 16, right 2 raised to 5 32, 64 and so on. This is the sequence Zn. Alright. So, you can plot this on the graph and you can see the behavior of this how it looks. Then I will state one more that is 1 upon 2 raised to n for all natural numbers n. So, the terms of this sequence x n would be when n is equal to 1 it is half then it will be 1 by 2 square that is 1 by 4, 1 by 2 cube, 1 by 8, 1 by 16, 1 by 32 just the reciprocals of the terms in this sequence and this keeps on moving. All right. So, again you can uh, plot this sequence on the graph both these sequences and you can see how they behave on the graph. Alright. So, with this I will end this session and in the next session we are going to talk about a very important concept called convergence of sequence. Alright. And these are my references. Thank you. Thank you.